I'm sure everybody would echo is um, the, the bright light that has been shown on issues related to health disparity and the, the absence of a really profound health equity. BusinessJournalDaily.com, Three Minutes With is brought to you by Farmers National Bank. In, in an effort to, to eliminate health disparities um, and to really achieve full health equity for our pediatric patient population, we recognize that that's, that's not any single hospital or any single practice working independently. That's got to be built on partnerships with um, um, community nonprofits, partnerships with public health, partnerships with schools. And so we are um, really uh, enthusiastic about the fact that there is, um, we think, a brighter light and a little more direction, a little more urgency uh, provided towards, um, towards solutions around health equity. And we're really excited to partner um, on work in those areas. Just knowing people in our community and talking um, with them, um, there are a lot of people that have lost many lives. Um, we have seen just recently, you know, our own um, former council person, Artis Gillum, who um, lost his life to COVID-19. And so we are lucky here to have our um, yeah, Office of Minority good. Health and that we have been working with um, our patients and our residents to try to get into the neighborhoods. And that's why when we started our um, working for testing, uh, we went into all the communities. So each side of town, we would try to get to each week um, so that people that lived in those neighborhoods could come and be tested as opposed to, you know, having to go and get in a car or get on the bus and get to somewhere. A, a big challenge that um, I've been trying to understand is how can we collectively as a community reestablish and gain trust, uh, particularly of disaffected uh, our communities and groups. I think in order for us to succeed in the mitigation and for us to succeed in the vaccination uh, campaigns related to uh, COVID-19, um, it's essential that we earn uh, trust. What I've learned from this and what's come out of this is truly a wonderful partnership between health systems and public health. We had it before, but I think it's only been doubled down on that. So working with health commissioners and, you know, multiple different areas of cities and counties and also how systems working together um, very openly about what we're doing to, to share on uh, information concerning COVID-19 and our present state. And then I also think it did shed a light on public health and the importance of that. We've always had, it's always been in the background. It's always done vaccines and, um, you know, uh, inspections of Restaurants and, and landfills, we've always had that, but I think this has raised the uh, public uh, perception of what public health is and the importance of that. And I think that won't go away. The issues that have come to us, uh, you know, that have, have exacerbated here in our county have been the, uh, the attention to the rural community in which we have a lot of folks that are isolated, that were, were um, generationally affected by poverty. Uh, those issues really surfaced for us because uh, as the pandemic evolved, we saw the economic uh, disparities. And so a lot of our folks uh, wrestled with many issues related to the um, impact economically. Uh, initially, we saw a lot of that. Uh, and then obviously the access to healthcare in a, in a rural community. Uh, we have access points, but uh, you know, with barriers like transportation, um, insurance coverage, and those, those kinds of barriers, uh, it made it very difficult for some of our rural community that's, that lives in poverty. This was something new that was for the schools and for them to actually take direction and build a relationship with public health proved as schools were starting to get back in place uh, that they wanted to listen to public health, build a relationship and ensure that our kids were going back, not only to uh, ensure safe instruction, but to ensure that if there was a case that it wasn't gonna be brought back into the family homes. How can we, you know, as an example, um, take advantage of the pilot program in Ohio to allow um, SNAP recipients to use their benefits to order groceries online. Um, there's a small number of retailers that are allowing this. How are we potentially able to um, make that more permanent um, so that more individuals um, more frequently um, and longer term are able to um, use those benefits to make sure that food access is not um, something that um, folks continue to have to work through. You know, we know that that's been an issue in the Valley before the pandemic and certainly the pandemic. 
um, and COVID-19 has, you know, as many said, shown a light on some of those um, disparities right. and issues. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell for notifications. And also make sure to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. For all of your business news, visit businessjournaldaily.com. For all of your arts and entertainment news, go to afterhoursyoungstown.com. Businessjournaldaily.com. Three Minutes With is brought to you by Farmers National Bank. I like a bank that's a pillar in my community. I like a bank so cutting edge, they have a lab branch. We are so alike. Well, we do both bank at Farmers National Bank. Farmers. Stand strong.